Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the AP Chemistry 2025 free response question number two. Let's get to it. Uh, number two starts off with about a uh, question about ascorbic like acid. You can see they gave us a number of moles of carbon dioxide. They gave us a number of grams of water. And the first thing they want us to do is find the moles of water. So we take the grams, 2.883 grams of water, and we divide by 18.016 grams per mole. And we get 0 0.1600 moles of water. And then we want to find a, an empirical formula for ascorbic acid. Now, they already told us the moles of carbon is the same as the moles of oxygen. So if we know 0 0.2400 moles of carbon dioxide, since there's a one-to-one -one ratio of carbon into carbon dioxide, we know there's 0.24 moles of carbon. If there's 0.24 moles of carbon, they told us the same number of moles of oxygen, which is 0.24 moles of oxygen. Now, how do we find the moles of hydrogen? Well, if there's 0.16 moles of water, then there must be 0.32 moles of hydrogen since there's a two to one ratio. We look at the ratio here, 24 to 32 to 24, that's a three to four to three ratio. Given our empirical formula of C3H4O3, you could divide by the smallest one, get a, a whole number ratio, but you can see it's a three to four to three ratio. Let's go to problem number B. Problem number B gives us a titration curve for this ascorbic acid. And they first want us to find the molar concentration using the titration curve. So what are we gonna do? M1V1 equals M2V2. We know we were titrating with 0 0.0550 molar of sodium hydroxide. We've used 16 milliliters of it. To get to the equivalence point, we divide by 10 mils of the acid, and that gives us a molar concentration of 0 0.0880 molar of the ascorbic acid. Well, from the titration curve, we want to find the pKa. How do we find the pKa? We go halfway to the equivalence point. If the equivalence point's at 16 milliliters, go halfway, go to 8 milliliters. What's the pH at 8 milliliters? It's approximately 4.1. And then they want to know the ratio of our conjugate base to our weak acid. Well, we're going to use Henderson Hasselbach. pH equals pK plus the log of that ratio. And if the pH is 4.7, you know you have more conjugate base than you do the weak acid. So you do that algebra 4.7 minus 4.1 through the opposite of log, which is 10 to the, and that gives us approximately a four to one ratio. I'm sure they're gonna give you some sort of uh, a leeway on that problem if you found the P the PAK was 4.2 or 4.1 or something like that. It, if you do 4.1, it's a kind of nice ratio of, I got 3.98 on my calculator. So I just rounded out the four to one ratio there. Let's go to problem C. Problem C turns into a kinetics problem. They give us concentrations and initial rates. And the first thing they want us to do in problem number I is explain how the data supports the conclusion that the, it's first order with the ascorbic acid. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna compare trials one and three. What happens between one and three? The ascorbic acid doubles, goes from 0.45 to 0.90. The I3 minus stays the same, so that you're canceling that out. You can see the initial rate doubles from trial one to trial three, which means this is a proportional relationship, therefore it is first order and it is conclusive. Well, they gave us the rate law. Rate equals K times the ascorbic acid times the I3 minus. You can take any trial, trial one, trial two, trial three, just stay consistent, plug in your data, I plugged in trial one for mine, and I got a K of 4.55 times 10 to negative fourth. What's the units? You're probably gonna get a point for units. Well, if the rate is in molar per second, and you have a molar and a molar, you gotta get rid of a molar, so it's molar to the negative one, seconds to the negative one. And to uh, finish out this problem number two, they were looking at the triiodide ion, the I3 minus, and they said it's significantly more soluble in water than elemental iodine. And they want to know the intermolecular force present between the I3 minus and the water. There's your clue to what the answer is. It is the ion to dipole interactions. They both are linear. They both have London dispersion forces. However, the I3 minus has greater polarizability due to its ionic charge, due to that negative charge. And so what is that going to result in is ion to dipole interactions with the water molecules the nonpolar, the elemental iodine does not have it. And that is question number two for AP Chemistry 2025. Hope that helped. 
I got more videos. Check out MrAiden.com. Check out my YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.